The opinions expressed on this TV program by the hosts, guests, and callers are solely their opinions and responsibility. They do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of Hot 7 TV or its affiliates. Good night, folks. Good night, and welcome to another steamy episode of Keeping It Real. Thank you so much, and we have a packed program tonight. So I'm going to get right into the shout-outs, and I tell you, every single day, I am bombarded by the fans of the show. Guys, am I all right? All right there? Okay. I am bombarded by the fans of the show who want me to shout out their area. So let's get into it. Derry So, Rivier Doe, Barons Drive in Soufre, everybody in Canaries, Flora Villa, and of course, the number one spot for keeping it real. Right down there in Ansari, there's more than one location, but you know, I'm going to shout out Market Street and the other street there by the square. Good night to you in Ancillary, keeping it real town. That's what it is. Good night to Rich Four in Denry, Gadet, Denier Rivier, Larry Seuss, out there in Miku, Labry. Oh, look at how I spelled Labry, I won't tell you. Trozel, Grosley, somebody says, what's up with the reception? That doesn't tell me anything. What does that mean? Lighting is bad. I don't know, people seeing things. What are you watching on? Can't help. Are you online? Are you on your TV? Are you on cable? Are you on your phone? Are you on a tablet? What is it? Bagatelle. Wavin Shabot. Entry Po. Two Part Two. George Cooper Road. Television. Cable. See the lighting, the quality. I don't know what's going on. Groselé. Chozel. And somebody else said on TV too. The quality looks like something Chozel Viewfort North Viewfort South things hot in Viewfort these days folks hot good night to Cap Estate somebody says washed out good night Bonte good night Rodney Bay Ridley Heights Rodney Heights Casaba Massad all over St. Lucia. Souffre. I think I caught everybody. Marigo, Cul-de-sac, Bexon, Opicon. Good night to you. Good night to Kimani. Good night to Malaika. Kubaril. And the Mon and Capitol Hill and everything else. And of course, those in the diaspora, I got my messages to Toronto, New York City. Good night, Toronto. Brooklyn, the Bronx, TV reception is not good. You look fuzzy. Quality is not sharp. That's supposed to be HD. Opicon, I just said Opicon, Opakute. The Bronx, Staten Island, Queens, Miami, Houston, Texas, LA. I'm looking at television and the show looks like analog, not digital. So I don't know, I'm going to get a refund tonight, folks. So thanks for the feedback. So, let's get into the scheme of things. Hmm. I don't know what the White House means. Good night to the White House, wherever that is. And I've been trying to figure out, BZ, good night to you. I've been trying to figure out where to start off. And I guess I have to kind of start off somewhat at the beginning of this, somewhat at the beginning. Well, we, we, you'll understand where I'm going with this. But let's start at the beginning. Roll it. What um, Dr. Jofali is getting in return is a St. Lucian passport. He has St. Lucian nationality. Unlike Bill Gates and the but people he made reference to. Does he have St. Lucian nationality? Does, does he have a St. Lucian passport? But there's a difference between having a passport and having St. Lucian nationality. Okay, but doesn't he have a St. Lucian passport? 
Wait, you know, about it, but no, 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 but if you're having a, a conversation, you were our British yeah. High Commissioner, all right, to London. You're our High Commissioner to London. You should, you should be in a position to answer that particular question, whether he has a solution no, passport or not. No, no, all I'm saying, what I'm saying to you, team, I'm trying to explain to you, and let me answer this with a kind of review, there's a difference between having a passport, which is to facilitate official duties, and necessarily having nationality. Okay, what's his status? I, I want you to make that point. What is his what status? Is he uh -huh. He's our representative of the IMO. Okay. Apart from that, does he have a Sinusian passport? Again, like I said, the authorities are limited. I can speak about those issues. No, but, I'm not sure it's in my yep. place. No, but if you're having a frank you know. discussion... Um, put it that way, Tim. Put it that way. Put mm -hmm. it that way, Tim. Uh, I, I, I would see nothing wrong in Dr. Jafali or anybody who has official status being granted a, a diplomatic passport. Because it is to facilitate the conduct of their duties. Okay, but does he have a, a, a diplomatic censorship passport? Again, again, I'm explaining to you. I cannot, I'm not the one to reveal that. I mean, there are there, the persons who are best into this to make those well, announcements. I'm not going to announce all the people I know. I can tell you, I know a lot of people that have diplomatic passports and have had it for many years. It's not my case to make that announcement. That's what I'm saying to you. Okay, because I, just, I don't want it to appear so that... Dr. Jafali is interested in Senusha to the extent that he does not want anything in return, that he's so altruistic in terms of his love for Senusha. Well, Tim, again, I, I don't know how much I can convince you about that. But on the other hand, Tim, of course, if someone is going to invest, and as much as they're going to have philanthropic notions, they are investors, and they're looking at they can make a profit, because he's, not in, he's, not, he's never always entirely a charity. Somebody might say, look, an investment can bring, bring a return on investment of 10%, but in a country it might only bring me 2% or 3%. So it's not a big money maker for me, but I wouldn't necessarily want to set up an enterprise where I lose millions every year. I mean, there are different levels of consideration one can give. If one can give a grant of say, $5 million, the grant is a big foundation of things can happen. People do make those grants in the world. Any final com comments from you, Dr. Taylor? Now, the point I want to make with this is, as you can see, or as you heard, how, uh, how much of a break dancer we have there in answering questions. All how you try to ask a question. And, and you know, I think that for some strange reason, is a mark of something. Because Dr. Ernest Hille will ask questions himself in the house about CIP, about other things. And then he will get the answer immediately. Somebody says the TV quality is unbearable and that's on cable TV. And he'll do as if he doesn't understand. He'll pretend... Like you never said anything about it and asked the same question. And we saw that on live TV in the House of Parliament on more than one occasion with regards to CIP. I saw it myself. It's on the record. And then he'll come back a month later at another session of the House as if nothing was explained, no information was given, no facts, no evidence. As if he just dropped in from taking a line by the beach and he never heard about anything. But then again, I want to go forward a little bit from the initial video and set the stage for things. Now we see Dr. Ernest Hille being very forthcoming in public again. In public, initially, was on a news spin. Everybody listens to Newspin. And then now in a very public forum, in person. Let's have that clip. I left my job to take a pay cut to be high commissioner. And I said to them, if it's your vehicle, come for it. Here is the victim. Come for it. See that? Come for it. Taunting whoever he's taunting. Siu nom vini point. 
come for it. I left a job to take that one for less pay. I won't even make that sound eh, like Scooby. You have the Facebook page for me? Not yet. But you see, folks, contrasting behaviors when it's convenient, but maybe not so contrasting because when he did that little jingle jingle with the keys, how much detail, how many facts about the real issue surrounding those keys did he really give? Let me know when you're ready, you know. All right, that's it. Okay, sure. And I'm waiting for the Facebook page because things happen and then there's a lull and then that statement on the Castries market steps at a, an SLP public meeting. And then he did the same thing in the House of Parliament too. He took his keys. Come and take it if you're ready. Come and take it. Now, I mean, that kind of, that, that reeks of whatever you want it to be, whether you want to call it arrogance, whether you want to call it bravado, whether you want to call it whatever. Finipoi, man. But the thing is, if you want to put this out there, and most people, seem to have heard about this vehicle situation surrounding Ernest Hile. when he did that little jingle jangle with the keys on the Castries market steps. There was nothing really out there from anyone. Nothing. These makeup guys are not setting me up properly, you know, when I get on here. They're not doing the right thing. I need a refund. And you would expect that if you want to play it out, play it out. Come with the evidence to support your position. You feel that you're being targeted. Or others may feel that you're being targeted. So you need to clear the air. If you don't want to clear the air, then you don't say anything. Because it doesn't make any sense just doing that. I'm not providing any information. You ready? <laughs> One second. And this situation brings back, when I get to the Facebook page in a second, it brings back, it unearths, it raises, right, we're ready. Let's go to that Facebook page. Dr. Ernest Hillier, August the 6th at 9.58 p.m. Now, he put out a press statement, which is entitled, and it was reproduced online in news media and wherever else, malicious and vindictive action of a desperate prime minister. And apparently, based on what he says here, this was in response to an affidavit which was filed in the courts. And I just want to bring your attention to a paragraph here, which is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. At first, give me that paragraph there. Go down to at first. Now you see, when you say things now, you introduce a whole new curiosity from people, right? A whole new curiosity. You have more questions being asked because this brings up everything with the whole tenure in office, if you want to use that word. Your whole uh, 
What's going on there? If, we, if we're not going with that, it, it's you're not gonna. So just take a screenshot of that and put it up on screen for me, okay? Of of that paragraph. Okay, we having a little a little uh, thing going on there. So anyway, let me just read it, and we're gonna pull that up anyway. It's the fifth, sixth paragraph. At first, he said, "I used money from Jufali." to purchase my vehicle. That's Dr. Ernest Hillier talking about vehicle. But when his investigation showed that Jufali's support for St. Lucia was placed in an account being audited by the government, he dropped that story. Then he said, I stole the vehicle. But again, the director of finance said there is no record of the state buying or owning any vehicle. Now I'm confused. Because he's talking about an account there. You can take that off until you're ready. He's talking about an account. Now, folks, I don't know anything about any account. Now, when this came out on the 6th, I started being bombarded. People started bombarding me with questions. about the account. You see that about the account and all the things. I made some comments about it too. And he said the account was being audited. So I took a note well, I, on my phone first and then I transferred them over here. A number of the questions that people asked me. And I think it's fair to say that if Dr. Ernest Hillier can come out publicly in the biggest way, on Facebook, talk about the vehicle. If you could have gone on the Castries market steps at a political meeting and for the public and the world to see, I think it was streamed on Facebook. Shake the keys. Come for it. To go in the House of Parliament on live TV. Still there to see now. Same thing. Come for it. I think he should make some statement to the people because he made a very public display of his challenge. So here are the questions some people ask me. With regard to that account, under whose name was the account set up? Who are or who were the signatories to that account? You ready? All right, I'll call it in a while. Who authorized the creation of that account. How much money was placed in that account and how frequently? What was the money in that account used for? What was the balance on that account when you left? I don't know if we're going to get an answer to that. I have no idea. But these are questions that people ask me and I thought I would share it with everybody else because it raises those questions. When was that audit initiated and who conducted the audit? And of course, logically, what was the result of that audit? Now, I want to say something. That we now have a leader of the opposition in Philip J. Pierre. And at one time, Philip J. Pierre said loud and clear that he had been the fully authorized deputy prime minister. But now in this case, Philip J. Pierre is no longer anyone's deputy. Philip J. Pierre is the Lou, the LOO, the Lou, leader of the opposition leader of the St. Lucia Labour Party, and expecting, hoping, wishing, praying to be the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. But he is the leader of the SLP right now, under whom Ernest Hillet gracefully and adoringly serves. So, I will pose to Philip J. Pierre a number of questions. Because if you're the leader, 
I would expect that you would know or you would have asked questions or conducted your own investigation into this situation because it seems to be going on and on and on like the Energizer Bunny. And there has been no resolution to these issues for St. Lucians. There has been no resolution. There continues to be questions. There continues to be questions. Have you conducted a full and thorough investigation into this matter? You need to say something about it. The, the questions continue on the street, on social media, in the Kaaba way, all over. What are the details regarding this vehicle situation that Dr. Ernest Hille has brought up on multiple occasions? Have you read the affidavit filed by Alan Chastney to which Dr. Ernest Hille has referred to in his Facebook post and carried in local media on August the 6th, 2020, just five days ago? And here are the pertinent questions, some more, the real pertinent questions, because you brought it up. Play that clip by the marketplace there for me again, please. I left my job to take a pay cut to be high commissioner. And I said to them, if it's your vehicle, come for it. There is the victim. Come for it. But all you can do is just make this very easy, you know. Very easy. Where's the detail? If it's your vehicle, come for it. You're the one who publicized it. Make a big deal out of it. So here's the questions again. Simple, basic questions that you can ask anyone. In whose name was the vehicle purchased in the UK and under what conditions? In whose name was the vehicle cleared on arrival in St. Lucia? In whose name is that same vehicle registered in St. Lucia? And there's a lot of talk running all over the place. And people are confused. People are confused. In what year was the investigation into that same vehicle begun? In which administration? And for what reason was an investigation launched into that vehicle? There's a lot of talk about that. And I'm not satisfied with what I'm hearing as a voter, as a citizen of St. Lucia. And people are bombarding me. I'm not your rep. You brought it up. Say something. You're only saying when you want. Give a little piece. You're not answering when you don't want to. You know, be consistent. Well, maybe that's being consistent in itself. But the situation with this is rather bewildering. You know, rather bewildering. And, and there's some, you know, you mentioned Jufali. You have that paragraph? Put, put up the paragraph for the people to see. Because Adam won't pa, pa ka ale asu Facebook. Facebook. At first, so I tell you about the people with the 100 inch screens. Bye la pui encore. Okay, at first, okay, go up a bit now. He said, I used money from Jufali to purchase my vehicle. But when his investigation showed that Jufali's support for St. Lucia was placed in an account, being audited by the government, he dropped that story. Okay, leave it up there for a few seconds. Let them read the rest. Now, with this Jufali situation, you see, when you make these statements, you raise the whole antsness of Jufali again. So now, 
Here's what I'm asking. On behalf of the people again. Jufali got diplomatic status in St. Lucia to be our representative on the International Monetary, uh, International Maritime Organization, the IMO. He had diplomatic immunity, and uh, he had diplomatic immunity. He had everything that came to a diplomat in the UK, tax-free or duty-free. He had a Maserati, he had a Rolls-Royce. His staff were entitled to certain things. People got passports who were related to him in, in that whole IMO thing. We know that his ex-wife sued him. There was a whole big brouhaha about that. There was a letter from the Prime Minister of St. Lucia, or at the very least the government of St. Lucia, indicating that they would answer no more questions with regard to removal or revocation of the immunity, diplomatic immunity from Walid Jufali with regard to his ex-wife's case in the courts. There had been talk about a diabetes research clinic in St. Lucia. We're hearing about a bank account that Jufali had money, put money in. We're hearing all of that. And what we're hearing is all those benefits to Jufali. Diplomatic immunity, tax breaks, tutkalte bagay, motoka, everything that came with it. And if you do your, your mathematics, you know that there, there has to be an equal somewhere. St. Lucia didn't benefit. Walid Jufali did not keep his end of the deal. He did not attend one single meeting at the IMO representing St. Lucia. But yet still he got all of that. All of that. That St. Lucia was willing to put his neck on the line. We're not. We're standing by principle. We're not doing nothing. Oh, yeah. So the question is, who benefited? Did anybody benefit? Was anybody squeezed? But strange enough, you don't have anybody on the opposition side saying anything much. Was there a quid pro quo? I don't know. These are the burning questions that St. Lucians have, and I have it too. I don't know, I don't know. Who's famous for ne never knowing? You have to know now. I don't know. One of the biggest mysteries in St. Lucia. Another mystery is Grindberg. But you see, the thing is, Philip J.P. cannot say, I don't know anymore. He cannot say he was only the deputy. Uh, deputy is essential, but sometimes the deputy don't know. You're in cabinet. In fact, hold on. In fact, last year, when you filed your motion of no confidence in Prime Minister Alan Chastney, what did you say? The same time when you walked out on your own motion. Yeah. You walked out before there was, there was the results. They asked for a count. Pick up your patch and you left. But when you brought your motion, you wanted to stick it around the necks of all the members of cabinet and say you're just as guilty because you are there. You're not saying anything against it. So should you be just as responsible for Grindberg, for Rochamel? For anything that happened with Jufali, anything at all, you should have the answers now because you are the chief crook and bottle washer. Chief cook and bottle washer. You should. And make a categorical statement. No more dilly-dallying and questions asking on you. Well, I don't know, but why are you asking me now? Straight to the point. Ask the question. 
This thing has been hanging around the necks of St. Lucians for too long. And then you bring it up again last week on the 6th. And it just, you know, live a face that whole thing again. When are we going to get a resolution to this whole Jufali fiasco? That's what I'm asking. And then a few months ago, what did we get? And then we just wake up in the middle of sleep. Al Jazeera report. And what did they say about St. Lucia? Just get on a yacht and come down to St. Lucia. What does that mean? How has that affected St. Lucia's credibility? St. Lucia's trustworthiness. Trustworthy. Trustworthiness. These are the questions that people cannot answer. I can't answer them. Do you have an answer, Philip J. Pierre? Do you have a categorical answer, Dr. Ernest Hille? The people of St. Lucia want to know. We need to put this to rest. We cannot every few months something come up and the whole thing come up again. Whole thing come up again. <sighs> we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Back after the break. Avoid the congestion and traffic associated with Cashew City and Rodney Bay Shopping and come to Gamewoods Mall. We have everything you'd possibly want, from a sprawling supermarket to a complete furniture store. From your choice of elegant boutiques to professional photography, dry cleaning, a hardware store, medical facilities, drug stores, hair and beauty salons, an eyewear center and so much more. We truly do have it all along with a food court which provides sumptuous meals and free Wi-Fi while you dine. Parking is plentiful and shopping times most convenient. Come to Cablewoods Mall. We're the mall that started it all. The Bryce water tanks are of top quality and highly durable. It's a monolithic tank, meaning it's just one unit, which makes it stronger than the other tanks, which comes in two pieces. It also carries a health guard lining, which is FDA approved. Price and Company, build for living, build for life. Tibanan Caribbean Bistro and Bar nestled within Coco Palm, a boutique hotel in the heart of entertainment capital Rodney Bay, offers a truly unique experience with the best food, drinks, and music. Open 7 a.m. to 12 midnight daily for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Tibanan specializes in authentic French Caribbean cuisine, delectable tropical cocktails, and the best live entertainment on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Tibanan also offers catering for weddings, special occasions, and conferences. For reservations, call 456-2800 or email reservations at coco-resorts.com. T-Banan Caribbean Bistro and Bar, where passion meets quality. 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 T-Banan Caribbean Bistro is now open for takeaway and delivery only. Place your orders by calling 456-2866 or 724-9309 or email orders at coco-resorts.com. Takeaway orders to be collected at hotel reception area and delivery fees vary on your location. right welcome back folks you see this is where I have to put the licks down see that's where oh, this thing's trying to take off this is where I'm going to put the licks where is our where are the journalists in St. Lucia I don't want no reporter 
Where are the so-called journalists, the political actors? Is that all they do, politically act? Where are the journalists to ask the questions from that Facebook post by a sitting parliamentarian in St. Lucia? I'm getting tired of this stupidity. Pretend journalists, where are y'all? Uh, reporting from where? Uh, reporting, reporting, reporting. What are you reporting? This is critical stuff to St. Lucia. You have the mumu pills? Put it up and I'll call it when you're ready. Let me know. Because I got a picture of the pills that some of these people take in. Where are the journalists? He talk about an account. Anybody ask anything about an account? Anybody ask anything about an audit? Anybody ask about the monies that were in there? The questions that I asked there? Eh? How are these questions going to be answered? Dang it! How are they going to be answered? It's a papi show thing in St. Lucia now. Do your jobs and stop pretending. Faking it, that's what y'all are doing. Y'all are faking it. Can't put two sentences together and ask a proper question. Faking it. Now let's move on. Let's move on. Cabot. Oh, that's the new whipping baby for the satellites out there these days. And oh, yes, you see all types of documents floating around. Memo to cabinet, tutkalte bagai. There we have him, boy. We have them. We have them, boy. We have them. Some of y'all people need to stop lying, you know. Lying, boldface. Malmene in the Seville of St. Lucian's. Now, I want to go back in time a little bit. We're not going through the time machine. It's just an explanation. No time machine tonight. I want to explain some things because apparently nobody has broken it down. They want to give you a lot of things to swallow. But they're not breaking it down for you into size, mouth, bite-sized chunks. Yes? You can't just foot it to buy a gojo. Now, Cabot, we've heard about all the nonsense about the NIC giving a loan to Cabot as an investor. To call it nonsense. The most ludicrous arguments you ever heard from people who know better and from others who should know better. But a bunch of nonsense. So... Way back in 1973, way back in 1973, Cape State Limited was given a lease of the Queen's chain by the Crown. Yeah, what are they? By the Crown. just wanted to pull something up here. They had a 75-year lease. And if you can do the math along with me, 1973 to 2000 is what? 27 years. So that means out of 25, we had 27, and we had we're 19, 2020, another 20 years, we have 47 years. So in essence, they have 28 years left on the lease. Now, there's something called an emphytutic lease. One day, yes. E M P H Y T E U T I C. Now, a simple explanation, or the first one you should get on Google, is an emphytutic lease is a type of, now this deals primarily with real estate, is a type of real estate contract specifying that the lessee or the person who's leasing the property must improve the property with construction. They don't just give it to you, you know. There's conditions. 
The term is commonly, well, that, well, that's something left over from the French, my friends. So, in the case of Cabot, Cabot does not have a lease. Take your, oh, 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 see, oh, Befla, take your time, take your time, okay? Some of you, they ready to go, take your time. Now, let me get the point. Now, Cap Estate St. Lucia Limited has a 75-year lease, all of Cap. Now, that property has a number of Queen's Chain or beaches, which would qualify, or areas which would qualify as Queen's Chain because a cliff is not Queen's Chain. It's where you have a beach. The high water mark. Now, because of that, you don't get a blanket agreement for the entire properties for each Queen's Chain location. So if there are three beaches on the property, so you get Donkey Beach, let's just say, let me make it simple for you. You have Casa Bas, another beach. You have, what's it they call it? Secret Beach. You get three leases because you need a lease for each individual location or property. Now, whilst Cap Estate St. Lucia Limited has this 75-year lease, they have sublet because it's their property, but the lease is theirs. They're responsible for the terms to Point Hardy and to Robert Disman, two entities they sublet to. Subsequently, Raffles came along. All of these people were under Cap Estates and Lucia Limited, Queen's Chain Lease. But now you have Cabot, which has bought over Raffles and wants their own lease because you cannot acquire the lease of someone else or another entity. It's an arrangement for a certain number of things to be done for certain development because to put water spots on the beach, to construct a bar, to do all of that, you can't just do it. You must have a lease. From the crown, Queen's Chain. That's where all of that goes on the Queen's Chain. So you must have a lease and conditions and terms on how you enter into the contract, how what you're supposed to do if there's a time period and end of lease, or what conditions will cause the lease to end. All of that has to be set out. So for Cabot to get a lease of the Queen's Chain. The head lease holder, which is Cap Estate, St. Lucia Limited, has to relinquish the lease arrangement with the Crown for that which Cabot has purchased. And now Cabot will now apply to the Crown for their own lease. But you see, there is, I hope you have it, you watching me there? There is something which appeared online, a photo, right? There's a photo which appeared online. I'll tell you what it is in a second. Let this thing wake up there quickly. Right. It is the Cabot conclusion. Yeah, I know you didn't put that on the line. I'll, I'll give you a little time to put it on. Yeah. Yeah. A conclusion that has been posted by a well-known individual is like, a, aha, we have you, right? And I'll tell you what that says until it comes up, right? I'll tell you what it says. You have it. Put it up on screen. The best guy is working over here. Cabinet conclusion. Pay attention, folks. This is exactly what appears online. 
Cabinet conclusion number 957 of 2020, date 20 of July 2020. The following cabinet conclusion is submitted for your attention. Cab request for agreement to Cabot St. Lucia, Inc. Cabinet considered a memorandum dated 16th of June 2020, submitted by the Department of Physical Planning, and approved the grant of a 75-year lease to Cabot St. Lucia, Inc., for the Queen's Chain properties listed below. Now listen well. On conditions to be formulated by the Department of Physical Planning, it means that the conditions have to be set out. Nothing has been written in stone yet. The conditions have to be agreed upon, which are set out and formulated by the Department of Physical Planning and then approved by Cabinet. So even when they come to their agreement with the Department of Physical Planning, it still has to go back to Cabinet for approval, and it gives you the block and parcel number. This approval is subject, just as I was telling you earlier, to the surrender of the head lease for the said properties or resolution of related issues between Cap Estate Limited and the Crown. Now there's another one. Right, folks? You can come back to me. There's another one. And that's called leak. Number two, the leak. Yodi yo leak. The roof has a leak. You got it? There we go. Drop it. There we go. Now you see at the top, I want the top right of that page. Scroll up. Uesaki Lakuma, confidential. People in confidential positions must be trustworthy. People must have confidence in them. That's why things are stamped confidential or private or secret. And folks, let me tell you what a memo is in case you don't understand clearly. You can take that down for now. A memo is not anything written in stone, you know. A memo to cabinet. And out of a memo, you can get a cabinet conclusion. An agreement that says, yes, okay, we're going to do that, or we're going to do X or Y. A memo is sent to cabinet to say, hey, we want this, or we want to do that, or this is the case, we want to do X, Y, Z. Whether it is for a company applying for something, whether it is whatever. But you can have a memo in your office typed up and before it gets to cabinet, you can say, you know what? I don't think that's quite right. There are some things that may be wrong here or we have to adjust something or we can hold back on some things for now and do something later. May Amun Metesa de Wa. It was withdrawn. Never made it to be discussed. Never made it. But some people want you to believe that this, put it up again, is some type of gospel truth and they put Madrid there and yo highlight it. That dead already. This thing there. Dead. D-E-D -E -D, dead. Scroll down for them please. They have all kind of block and parcel numbers. You know like when you write in a story or an essay, you have a draft, you have a second draft, you edit things out, you say, no, this is not quite right. Oh, I got something wrong. It's not that block and parcel number. So this has no weight. It has no bearing. It has nada. But somebody, somebody, leak that. Somebody leak that out. I will say no more on that because it's null and void. It means nothing. It has no weight. So that's a papi show leak. Somebody jumped the gun there and looks rather stupid. But we'll hear about that one later. We'll hear about that one. Okay, that's, that's it for now on that. But you know, 
You say, say member guy, this is the thing that, that eats away at me. This is, come closer there now. Let's, let's keep it real. Now you see that leak there? Flush that for me. Flush that. That's Papi Show. Flush it. That is, what, that is worse than toilet paper. Absolutely useless. Flush it again. Flush it. I know they can hear that flush all the way down in ancillary. That is worse than toilet paper. That, that leak that's supposed to be there. Okay? You know, folks... I mean, like some of these people out there are gluttons for punishment. So-called journalists again, political actors, whoever, whatever, they, whatever. They went and interviewed this Canadian visitor. I mean, come on. Come on. I want you to listen for yourself. The absolute, the abject stupidity and ridiculousness of that interview. And in essence, it is interviewing a foreigner who don't know one rat's tail about what's going on in St. Lucia, who's just a regular visitor. Let me let you listen for yourself and I'll give you my analysis of the paralysis when it's done. Roll it. Surprised to see the amount of clear cutting going on in, in the area, you know, where they've raised the lands right back down to just dirt, um, removing all the vegetation and the forest. You know, uh, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on the environment, but what I will say is the erosion that that's going to create is potentially problematic. So as a visitor to St. Lucia, I mean, do you golf at all? In St. Lucia? I mean, anyway. Yeah, yeah. sometimes I golf, but, you know, I try, I try to do activities that are... Uh, authentic and local, you know, and I don't know that golf is an authentic experience in St. Lucia, so I wouldn't really so seek out a golf experience in St. Lucia as a tourist. You know, I might go to Scotland for golf, or I might go to, you know, places in America or Arizona, but, you know, golf isn't, I don't think of St. Lucia as a golf destination. And that was supposed to mean what? One individual... Canadian, he said he's looking for something authentic and local when he comes to St. Lucia. Nothing wrong with that. So what does that mean for St. Lucia? But there are tourists who come to St. Lucia who want to go scuba diving. There are tourists who come to St. Lucia and way gung-ho about the food. They want to grizzly, go grizzly and get the fish and lobby and all of that sort of thing. There are tourists or visitors who come to St. Lucia who want to do the nature trails. They want to go hiking. They want to watch the birds. They want to watch the butterflies. They want to watch the flowers. Very likely that guy will not want, really want to do that. But they are all different types of travelers, of visitors, of tourists. So what the hell does that mean by one guy saying that he doesn't really want to play golf, or if he wants to play golf, he go to Arizona or to Scotland. Yeah? But if you want to be a tourist, and you want something authentic, you could go to Barbados. You could go to Thailand. You could go to Mexico. You could go to Aruba. Trinidad. But he chose St. Lucia for something authentic. St. Lucia, not for golf. But there are other people who will choose St. Lucia for golf. So what does that interview really mean? And then he's, the guy says, damn it. The guy says he's not an expert on land or the environment or whatever he said. But he believes this will cause erosion. And then they cut away to a, 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 a backhoe, earth-moving equipment, digging out soil and everything and the the vegetation is away, and you know, some kind of background music that makes you feel all so sad and everything and all of that nonsense. But if you're building a house, if you're building anything, you have to scrape away the top, you have to put the foundation in. If you put in a road, you have to scrape away the top. If you're building a golf course, 
where you had trees and roots and rocks. You have to clear it away. My gosh. Come on, man. A woman. A political actor. I mean, what was that interview supposed to mean to the people of St. Lucia? What was that interview supposed to mean with regards to what Cabot is doing here? What? The guy is no expert. He's a visitor. He came to St. Lucia for what he wants out of St. Lucia. If he's not a golfer, if he cannot afford it, if he wants to go to golf somewhere else, so what? Every golfer in the world is going to come to St. Lucia? No. Will people come to St. Lucia because of golf? Yes. Will that be the only attraction at Cabot? Well, the golf will be the attraction, but the people who want to buy the condos or whatever they're selling there, that will be enhancing the product, the, the overall thing. Just like DSH, the racetrack. Huh? I mean, oh my gosh. It's, it's embarrassing. I mean, what was... Play that interview again. I want people to listen to that and see wh where this really applies at all to, to the big scheme of things in St. Lucia. Roll it. Surprised to see the amount of clear cutting going on in, in the area, you know, where they've raised the lands right back down to just dirt, um, removing all the vegetation and the forest. You know, uh, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on the environment, but what I will say is the erosion that that's going to create is potentially problematic. So as a visitor right, to cut Solution, that, cut that, I mean... Cut that. So you have a visitor, no disrespect to the guy, he spoke honestly. You have a visitor who's admitting to you that he is no expert on any of that, then proceeds to give his opinion, which you air as if it's some authority Above the opinion, the expert opinion, the experience of our experts here in St. Lucia from the Department of Planning. That this self-professed non-expert of a visitor has some type of weight over their expert considerations. I mean, what, what, what is this saying? What is this saying? Now, a lot of people have been talking about Marjorie. Yeah, Marjorie on the beach there and everybody's in love and this, that, and that, la. You know, the, the Maliway undertones, you know. Let me give you some information about Marjorie. I think I met her once or twice. Food is good. Woo! The food over there is good. But Marjorie has a one-year lease on that property, which expires sometime in 2021, I believe. January 2021. But Marjorie has had a one-year lease, a recurring one-year lease, since 2001. And I wonder why certain people who want to play Marjorie as a victim never really extended her lease to more than one year. Maybe through successive administrations, it was believed that her development of the area was minimal. I don't know. I'm just asking a question. Because the SLP didn't give her a 75-year lease. So would that lease be commensurate with the type of development that you'd be putting on the beach, on the Queen's Chain? Now, one thing I want to tell you, folks. You see, people always talking about Queen's Chain and all that nonsense hogwash. The excuses they come up with. The noise that they make, there's no logic to it. All things to get emotional, but when you really look at it, like an emphytutic list, how many of these people have told you what that is? 
where it happens, what's the reason for it. So you get a lease of the queen's chain, and it all depends on the expanse of the development, how much money is going to be put into it, everything. 25,000, 50,000, whatever. And unusually, what is referred to kind of a peppercorn rate. Look that up, peppercorn rate. Do a little homework for me, keeping it real crew. Do a little homework. Look up peppercorn rate and see what that means. Got to let you do something once in a while. Don't leave all the work for me. Right? Now, we're moving on past Marjorie. And we're going to Emma. <laughs> we're going down to Emma in the hot seat. Emma Hippolyte. Last week, Tuesday, Wednesday. In the hot seat. Drop that clip. Do you remember when we came in in 2011, um, we immediately had Hurricane Thomas. And the country, we came in already, we inherited a very... Hold on, hold on. Pause, pause uh, right there. Pause right there. When we came in in 2011, elections was what? November, December that year? When we came in in 20. 11, we came in, uh, play it again, Hurricane Thomas. Do you remember when we came in in 2011, um, we immediately had Hurricane Thomas. Well, pause that there. Yeah, pause. We immediately had Hurricane Thomas. Hurricane Thomas was what, September 2010? I, I don't know if I'm wrong. Maybe it's my bow tie that has me. We immediately had Hurricane Thomas in 2011 continue keep rolling and the country we came in already we inherited a very tight fiscal um, position from the united workers party administration um, persons may not have known because we didn't make any noise about it but the administration at that time was already taking loans to pay wages pause that right and there. we know that this pause that right there the administration at that time was already taking loans to pay wages. Elections in 2011 was the 28th of November, 2011, 28th of November. That's a year and a few months after Hurricane Thomas. taking loans to pay wages, but that's been happening all the time. It's not anything new. Is, is that anything new in St. Lucia? But Emma Hippolyte would have you believe that for some reason, keep rolling. And we know that this was not sustainable. And Dr. Anthony um, tried to take steps to bring the country into a better fiscal position. And consequently, um, the type of um, monies that we needed to, to deal with the infrastructure. OK, hold that there. Um, he put measures in place. What measures? You see, this is, this is station Salatui. What measures did he put the follow-up question? What measures did he put in place? Did he introduce VAT? Was that a measure? Did he increase water rates by 66%? Was that another measure? Did he institute a desilting levy? Was that another measure? Did he increase license fees? Was that another measure? Did he cut on the school uh, feeding subsidy and transportation fees? Did he reduce on that too? Were the, all those measures... But they still were not working! They were not working. But the thing that Emma Hippolyte did not say was said for her by Dr. Kenny Anthony himself. 
You know what I'm talking about? And he said it about his administration because there was no COVID-19. There was no 9-11. There was no financial crisis. One hurricane discombobulated St. Lucia throughout your administration. But let's hear, because I hear some people are discombobulated out of their minds when they hear this, but it's not me. I'm not the one who said it. It came from the horse's mouth. I'm not calling the man a horse. You know what I mean. It came from the horse's mouth about the financial situation and why banks and other lending institutions would not borrow. Jue. But something happened. Something happened that made the situation different. And it is the first time St. Lucia has experienced this. This time around, we could not borrow to finance the deficit. That is the no. crux of Last the Last year, and this is where the crux of the problem is, we wanted to issue bonds of $266.5 million. But we actually were able to raise only $45.5 million. That's a significant difference. In other words, we were not able to raise $221 million. Likewise, we wanted to raise short-term loans of $38.9 million, but we were only able to raise $29.3 million. Again, a shortfall of $9.6 million. So what has happened here is that we cannot turn to borrowing to fix up our deficit because banks, individuals, and institutions who used to lend before are no longer lending governments. They're insisting that they will lend you if you get your financial house in order. And in our case, getting our financial house in order means that we have to bring down that fiscal deficit from where it is at 5.8%, below 4%. That's the key. I need to explain that to you? Do I really need to explain that further? I thought it was very clear. Very clear. Now, uh, I'm telling you folks, it's a worn out recording. Grace Water Project finally has begun. And it, let's, I, I have to confess tonight, we have no St. Jude's pictures, we had a little problem so no pictures tonight, folk, but I will make up for it next week. Grace Water Project soil turning ceremony last week Thursday down in Viewfort area. Let's see those photos. Now, since the Second World War, nothing has been done with that situation. And we heard in 1998 by Dr. Kenny Anthony himself, that Viewfort would be the new frontier, but for Viewfort to be the new frontier, you're looking at new hotels, new business, and other developments. They're going to require more water. And currently, the Grace Water Intake produces 1.5 million gallons of water a day. When this project is done, something like I think $60 million, when it is done, the production will be 4.5 million gallons a day. Does that sound like something logical being done by the government? Nothing was done before. The other water projects that have been done in the South were not done during the previous administration or previously when they made those statements in 1998. So how are you going to develop the, the South with more hotels, with more businesses, with more in incentives for people to move back to the south. How was it going to be the new frontier with not enough water? This is the forward thinking that is necessary by any administration to show that they are serious about the development of the south, about the development anywhere. But last week or the week before, there was another official handing over by the Mexicans in Denry North in Larisus. Right? There we go, folks. Prime Minister, v representative of government ministries, Mayor of Viewfort, Vinci Construction, and others. 
Therefore, the soil told me, monumental project. That is going to revolutionize the South because you're going to need water. Lucerne University is starting up soon. The other developments in the South, you need water. You need more water. And then the year before, at the handing over of the first phase, by the Mexicans again, at Tomazo, the water plant there. Representative Sean Edward then, and Representative Sean Edward two weeks ago in Denry North. I mean, the politics not stopping at all, and then you have people grow. Oh my God. And then at this very same one, Moses Jabatis Akko. Well, this was a project started by the SLP, and we went out and got the funding, and this, that, and Sean. Same thing, Alva Baptiste went out there and this one, same thing, year before, member guy in the first phase. I mean, sod turning, sod turning, member guy line, who can say that? That's what some people tell you, sod turning. I mean, say books are back and hot, messier. I mean, you're compounding it, okay. You get your kudos every time they mention that, but you know what? You see, when they say that, trying to throw shade on the government, trying to big up, big up, man, yeah, yeah, man, big up themselves, they're putting themselves down because what does that say? You started it, you couldn't finish the first phase. You started it, you couldn't finish the Denry North. You started the great thing that we just saw there, you couldn't finish it. You were there all through, okay, EU, you had a naming ceremony, you couldn't open it. You had St. Jude's, you couldn't open it, you couldn't finish it. You had all the time, in fact, you call election six months early. Was that really a priority? And you kept saying November this year, this year, the price kept going up, you couldn't finish it. The airport was there. Y'all had your whole term again to Pukumase Fair Bagai. Y'all could not finish it. The unemployment was sky high. Y'all could not fix it. The roads were in a dismal state. Emma just did latale. Y'all could not fix the roads. Kisa Zotsa Fair, Messier. I mean, come on. Flush that inefficiency, inability. To do to complete anything, man. Flush that. Waste of time, waste of people's vote. Tut by is up pass up in But one thing, y'all finished toilets in, in Marsha. I mean, the freeness. Kisa Zotsa Fini, Messier. I mean, it's just a constant. Tut by Zopa Afini. And then after you all fail, now you all want to dictate to this government how to do things. Ufa we Zotfu? I mean, you all are seeing SLP. I mean, you all seeing stars. That's the stars you all in a days. That's the stars you all seeing. <laughs> and then what did... Ah, my boat is, I don't know. What did Emma say about the single mothers in Sufre? I mean, you all don't trust yourself, you all don't trust anybody, you all don't trust the single mothers, nobody. What did you say? You won't give them the cash, you'll give them vouchers because you didn't want, you didn't want them to go and buy scratch. Let's take a break and we'll open up the lines for your calls. Right back.
avoid the congestion and traffic associated with Cashew City and Rodney Bay shopping and come to Gablewoods Mall. We have everything you'd possibly want, from a sprawling supermarket to a complete furniture store. From your choice of elegant boutiques to professional photography, dry cleaning, a hardware store, medical facilities, drug stores, hair and beauty salons, an eyewear center and so much more, we truly do have it all. Along with a food court which provides sumptuous meals and free Wi-Fi while you dine. Parking is plentiful and shopping times most convenient. Come to Cablewoods Mall. We're the mall that started it all. The Bryce Water Tanks are of top quality and highly durable. It's a monolithic tank, meaning it's just one unit, which makes it stronger than the other tanks, which comes in two pieces. It also carries a health guard lining, which is FDA approved. Bryce and Company, build for living. Tibanan Caribbean Bistro and Bar Nestled within Coco Palm, a boutique hotel in the heart of entertainment capital Rodney Bay Offers a truly unique experience with the best food, drinks and music Open 7am to 12 midnight daily for breakfast, lunch and dinner Tibanan specializes in authentic French Caribbean cuisine Delectable tropical cocktails And the best live entertainment on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays Tibanan also offers catering for weddings, special occasions and conferences for reservations, call 456-2800 or email reservations at coco-resorts.com. Tibanan Caribbean Bistro and Bar, where passion meets quality. 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 Tibanan Caribbean Bistro is now open for takeaway and delivery only. Place your orders by calling 456-2866 or 724-9309 or email orders at coco-resorts.com. Takeaway orders to be collected at hotel reception area and delivery fees vary on your location. And welcome back folks to the final segment. The time is flying and I know lots of you want to call in and Express your thoughts and ask your questions or whatever. We're sticking to the topic tonight, 450-0777. Now, I have some other photos here now that I want you to take a look at, folks. I'm going to be touching on it next. Not that one, number one, man. You're going right in the thing. Number one. Who are just, oh, you malmenning me, man, tonight, man. What's going on? There you go. You're killing me. Now, there's a photo. Now, let's go to the next one, number two. Now, in those photos, I was going to ask you what you see common. Let's go to number three. What do you see common in that photo? Well, it's right in the middle, in the background. Let's go to number four. There you go, folks. Some of you may be very familiar with this photo. Next one. Whoa, we're getting closer. Zoom lens package rose up. That's right, folks. And let's go to the granddaddy of them all. Bo! You see that, folks? Look at that hill there. I wonder what the last name. Oh, hey, zoom even further. Yeah. I wonder what the name is of the person who was responsible for this. I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> this will be under investigation. But you see, those of you who know the North well, this is just to the rear. Can you give me one of the long shots there? Of the Royalton Hotel. Give me another one. That's still close. Another one further out. See Royalton on the left of that hill there? So that's to the north. We have a call. Good night. You're on the air. Let's keep it real. Oh, oh ran away. So let's go back to the full shot. There you go, folks. Gasa, look at what was done to that hill. We didn't hear anybody crying about 
indigenous grasses or trees or the flora and fauna, we didn't hear anybody crying about butterflies or the birds or the birds that flew there and nest in the trees. Good night, you're on the air. Let's keep it real. Good night. Yes, good night, uh, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. This is Dr. Anthony Ferdinand. Hello. And I just want to say that um, speak, you're doing speak a into good your job. Mouth. Speak into the mouth, please, please. Yes, are you hearing me? Yes, that's much better. Okay. I just want to say, we have a lot of people always telling people how to clean their house, and their house is more filthy. And what I'm trying to say, a house divided against itself, it cannot stand. And let me tell you something. The SLP trying everything to win that election, and I'm telling you, they do not have a vision. I let you know on the television that Chastney has a vision for the country. And I want to say, Mr. Williams, you're doing a fantastic job. You have a good night. Keep up the good works. Thank you very much, caller. Thank you so much. It's always nice to get congratulations. But I think the people of St. Lucia have been slowly and steadily, <laughs> very fast, realizing the difference in what the previous administration could not have produced, failed to produce, and what this government under Prime Minister Alan Shastney is able to do. We have another call. Good night. You're on the air. Let's keep it real. Hello. Hello. Good night. Yes. Good night, sir. Hello. Hello. Good night. Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go Let ahead, caller. About... Listen to me on the phone. Okay. Mr. Frederick. Guys, you see guys like Mr. Frederick? Go ahead, caller. Go. You're listening to your, your TV yeah. or your computer. Go ahead. Okay. Guys like Mr. Frederick. Yadi. Jaim. And Mr. Nickel. So, you is a stinking hypocrite. Caller, I'm not... What, 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 good night. What are you saying? Uh, I, I don't know what you're saying there, Caller. You need to get yourself sorted out with that phone. So, you know, I'm, we have another call. Good night, you're on the air. Let's keep it real. Good night. Yes, sir, good night. Yes, good night, sir. Yeah, Mr. William, let me tell you. Tell me. Okay, it's, 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 it's over three years since I'm hearing that um, thing, um, like, what is it, Dr. Hille. Yeah. The Jeep is not his, like, he made some ball, ball, blah, 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 blah. So why they cannot get that Jeep from him up to a day like today? That's the question you're asking me, Carla? Why yes, they I'm cannot finished. get it? Yeah, I'm finished. Well... There's supposed to be an investigation which was started before this government came in. And there are a number of issues regarding that whole tralala that's going through the process. And you cannot blame and you cannot say that every opportunity was not given to rectify the situation. I'm quite certain that the period of time that has gone on has been more than enough. But we have another call. So, good night, you're on the air. Let's keep it real. Hello. Good night, you're on the air. Good night, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. I would, I would like to tell the Labour Party people, they say Shasne must go. Give me five reasons why Shasne must go. And I'll give them a hundred reasons why he should stay. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you very you. much, caller. Thank you. You know, folks, I, I've looked at a lot of the, uh, you know, examined a lot of the alligators that have been made. And they have not been substantiated with any credible evidence. Just a lot of innuendo. Good night. You're on the air. Let's keep it real. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. Good night. I'm calling from Canada, and this is the first time I've listened to your show. Well, thank you very much. And I must say you're doing a great job. Thank you. 
I must say that um, it's it's very true that Chastain has a vision for the country, and I think we need to be patient about it. The government is in power only for five years, and it takes time for change to happen. And I think he's on the right track, but we have to give him the time to implement that vision. And I think if we solution support him as a leader, we will see the successes of that vision. Just like Mr. John Compton, Sir John Compton had a vision for the country. It took a while for Senator to reap the benefit of this change. But we have to ensure that we support him and he's got to have some unwavering leadership to ensure that this brings St. Lucia far ahead of where it is today. Thanks for tonight. Thank you very much, caller. Thank you for keeping it real and for calling all the way from Canada. Canada. Thank you so much for calling. 450-0777. Now, you know, folks, you know I always keep it real with you all. And government is just like regular life. Good night. You're on the air. Let's keep it real. Hi. Good evening. Good evening to you. I am also happy to hear this person who just called from Canada saying that um, he thinks that Alan Chastney has a vision for St. Lucia. And he did mention Mr. Compton. All I want to say is the message that Compton left with us was, Stop the borrowing. And that is where our Prime Minister is causing St. Lucia to go down the drain. Borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. But why do you say he's going down the drain? Because you all are using this borrowing as something to boast about in your own home, Norbert. I am sure that you will not borrow money to pay a credit card or borrow money. Oh, caller, 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 hold on there, hold on there. It, it, it shows clearly that you don't understand the concept. I, I understand very, very clearly. But that I happens, understand but very, that is, very but clearly. But that actually, Our that is, said caller, caller, hold, slow down a little bit for me. There. Slow down, slow down. Okay, thank you very down. much, caller, thank you. It, your statement there clearly indicates that, unlike what you say, you don't understand what you're saying. Because it is prudent fiscal management to borrow at a lower rate to pay off a loan which is at a higher rate. This is, this is practically the basics in finances. You have a credit card or a loan which is at a rate of interest of, let's just say, 8%. And you get another bank, it's just like you go to a store. One store will have a pair of jeans for $50. And you go to another store and you get the same pair of jeans for $25. But instead of jeans, you have money. So you take the one for $25, or at the lower interest rate, and you pay off the one. So now you're paying less in the long term. That is sensitive. That's, call it, that is basic mathematics. There's nothing complicated to understand in that. And if that is going to be the foundation of your argument. Number two, is St. Lucia self-sufficient? No, it is not. Is agriculture doing it for St. Lucia? No, it's not. St. Lucia is, what, a third world country, a small country? So before we get to that level of production, before we get to that economy which can sustain us because you have to realize we are where we are right now period the people that tell you about oh don't borrow and you should not borrow where's the money coming from abamatla good night you're on the air let's keep it real you it real good night sir that's right all right no but that is me very enlightening show tonight thank you very much very interesting I was listening to the interview with the visitor, mm -hmm. and the visitor was talking about uh, moving the, the earth and um, playing up all the vegetation. I personally have been traversing through that region. I've been 
I've been I've been up and down this for over 40, 40 years, and and it's it's really amazing that there is nothing like vegetation up there. What they what they do have there is um, a lot of dirt, a lot of earth. Rough, rough and, plants um, in, in, in dry areas, very hardy plants. Exactly. Yeah. And what you get is cactus, cactus plants which cactus haven't been touched. Yeah. Like I say, I go there every day. I know the area very good. And um, the visitor is totally misdirected as to what he was talking about because he hasn't got a clue what it's like, you know. And his statement was misused. It was totally misused, but it was... The whole thing was hashed out to be like this, you know, misguided people, you know. Um, it's, it's a lot of propaganda. And this is what I like your show about. You bring out the facts. And the fact is that um, there is nothing up um, in the Cabot Link area, Mount Hardy area, but, you know, cactus plants, etc., etc., et and crude for a project for a golf course. Well, that you, you, you quite call her as a matter of fact. I was there today. You have my photos from Casaba Beach, and I've well, been. I grew up in the north, and I've been through that area multiple times. Donkey I Beach, have... the whole secret beach and everything. It's a nice <laughs> little beach. But I want to say one thing, Carla. In fact, go ahead. Go ahead. I have so many photos, like likewise, that I keep looking at over and over. And I cannot see a shed of evidence of any kind of um, of a nature of, of, of a sort of a, of artifacts out there that um, that is going to be tampered with and stuff like that. Absolutely nothing like this. Well, well, Carla, let me tell you something. Anything of any sort is going to be taken care of, and I have to state categorically that there will be full public access to any beaches in the area. Every hotel that has been built in St. Lucia on the beach, the public has had access on the Queen's chain. Let, let me be, play lawyer tonight. Every single hotel that has been built on the Queen's chain in St. Lucia, the public have access. Ridwe Beach, whether it's VG Beach, whether it's Halcyon Beach, whether it's Latok Beach, whether it's down in Viewfort at Coconut Bay, Tupatu, the public of St. Lucia have access to the beach. Well said, because we all St. Lucians and natives out there know that we all have access to every one of the beaches out there. Well, thank and, you very much, Carla. We have yeah, to nice wrap it up. To you. Thank you so have much for calling. Evening. Thanks for keeping Bye -bye. it real. Yeah. And that's the Marjorie area. And as you can see, Sargassum still all on that beach there. Now tell me, you know, people crying, making noise. You're telling me that if you have a huge development in the area, that Marjorie is not going to benefit from that wherever she is there, on there on the beach, another part of the beach, wherever, whatever. Why didn't the previous administration give her a 50-year lease? It's, it's, it's been going on since 2000. Let me get my paperwork here. Let me tell you. Since 2001. One-year lease. One-year lease. One-year lease. So nobody's been doing, nobody's been victimizing any Maliway or anything at all. All of these things are based on what you can do with the location. And that's just the truth of the matter. Let's not pretend. Let's not try and be bleeding hearts, you know, about this. Nobody's trying to victimize anybody there. But of course, you know, those who have the agenda or those who want to capitalize or gain some, get some type of mileage off of it will spin and talk all the whatever they want about it. But that's it for tonight, folks. Thank you so much for staying with me through it all. Didn't mention, ha, ah, the number one fans of the show, the original crew on 93.1 FM on Sky FM Radio. Good night to you, Champagne, and all the crew out there in Bocage and in Lance Road and all over St. Lucia. Piero, thank you so much for tuning in. 
thank you to the 93.1 FM crew for being with Keeping It Real another night. That's where we started off on radio, folks. And we're into our third year now, two years. The two-year anniversary went by in June, and now we're into the third year of Keeping It Real. Thank you so much for taking your time out, your popcorn, your drinks. And good night to the lady who had her berry blast last night and had to get some more because the show was actually is actually Tuesday nights and not Monday nights. So thank you so much to that number one fan at Bocage. Thank you to all of you in the diaspora and all around St. Lucia. Have a good night and see you next week. I'm Norbert Williams. Good night. <laughs>